Let's talk a little bit about the skin microbiome. So the microbiome of the skin, of course, are the microbes that dwell on the surface. Now, the crazy thing about this is the site where we're talking about differs. The microbiome of the skin behind the ears is different from that of the scalp, is different from that of the nose, is different from that of the uh, other parts of the face or neck or back or feet. Or, uh, or groin. These are all unique. They have unique composition. So when I say skin microbiome, it's not one thing, it's many things. But there are some important features shared by most locations. One of the most important features is that people who have healthy skin tend to have an acidic pH, typically about 4.5. And they also have the skin microbiome dominated by Staphylococcus epidermidis. That's a, a healthy microbe that colonizes most people's skin. And unhealthy skin, such as that that has seborrhea or eczema or rosacea or psoriasis uh, or acne, typically has a less acidic pH, about 5.5 or higher. And that difference of 4.5 in a healthy situation and 5.5 in an unhealthy situation, that's a tenfold reduction in acidity because the pH scale is logarithmic. So unhealthy skin more towards 5.5 or higher and is not dominated by that same microbe. It's dominated by Staphylococcus aureus and not just in the area of the rash, but typically body wide. So uh, that situation, dominance of Staphylococcus aureus and less acidic pH cultivates or continues. It, it encourages the persistence of the rash. So uh, what we can do about these rashes, of course, another conversation, but a lot of that is SIBO or CFO that we have, uh, have to address. So that's a conversation for another, another day. But are there things you can do to tip the balance in favor of having Staphylococcus epidermidis become dominant and have a more acidic pH? Well, these are things we've talked about before. Lots and lots of fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefirs, make yogurt with the myroiderite or with the gut to glow and other microbes. All these microbes help you acidify the skin and tip the balance more towards Staphylococcus epidermidis, including the prebiotic fibers we talk about. Foods like onions, garlic, shallots, jicama, root vegetables, carrots, radishes like dandelion greens. These things all help you cultivate the microbiome to produce butyric acid or butyrate. And that butyrate or butyric acid goes to the skin and acidifies the skin, adding to the balance to favor Staphylococcus epidermidis. Now here's something to be aware of. If you use moisturizers or creams, of course avoid the bad things like phthalates and parabens, but look for brands that contain glycerol or glycerin. Some brands do have that. If you, do, if you have a, a moisturizer you like, it doesn't contain that. You can always buy an inexpensive bo a bottle of glycerin or glycerol and add some, add a tablespoon or so to your moisturizer. Mix it in, of course, because what that does, it causes Staphylococcus epidermidis. It loves, it loves that glycerol and converts it to butyric acid or butyrate. So it further acidifies the skin. Now, uh, as an aside, one thing you don't want to do is acquire hospital sourced Staphylococcus epidermidis, because even though Staphylococcus epidermidis in normal situations is a really good microbe to have that encourages skin health and appearance, having the kind, the strains that occupy hospitals, that are very dominant in hospitals, on surfaces, in the air, everywhere. That's a different kind, different strain of epidermidis. And that's the kind that can cause infections if you have a catheter or a prosthesis put in you when you're in the hospital. So if you have to visit somebody in the hospital or haven't been you're hospitalized, you want it often as possible wear gloves and a mask so you're not exposed to their strains of Staphylococcus epidermidis. So fermented foods, prebiotic fibers, make the yogurts, um, consider having moisturizers or creams that contain glycerol or glycerin or buying some and adding it to it. Now there's one last microbe to know about. So you know a lot about Lactobacillus rotari, right? But Lactobacillus plantarum is another microbe with great skin effects. Not as powerful as rotari, but still ha makes a contribution and, and it has so many other beneficial health effects anyway. And it works both orally and topically. So an easy thing to do is to make a yogurt or other fermented food with Lactobacillus plantarum, here's a really 
easy, inexpensive workaround to get a strain of Lactobacillus plantarum. There's a product in the dairy aisle, the refrigerator, called Good Belly, and that has a very good strain of Lactobacillus plantarum. Take a couple tablespoons of that juice and use that to st as a starter culture for your yogurt or other fermented food. Now, if you do choose to consume that product, let it sit on your kitchen counter for at least 48 hours before you consume it, but it's too sugary. Out of the factory, it's too sugary, and you want the microbes to consume the sugar. So leave it on your kitchen counter for 48 hours, taste it. If it continues to be sweet, let it sit another 24 hours until there's almost no sweetness left. You don't want that sugar, right? And you can either consume it orally on occasion, you can even apply it to skin for a few minutes. So it doesn't necessarily take up residence. That lactobacillus plantarum doesn't necessarily take up residence, but it contributes to causing that shift away from Staphylococcus aureus towards Staphylococcus epidermidis.